first off, I wanted to ask, um, what was the inspiration for this story? Was this something that was based on your own personal experience, or...? No, thank God. Um, <laughs> mostly, where, where it came from was uh, a short story I'd written a long time ago that had not really worked. It was a kind of a failure of a story, but it was about a brother and sister who, because of the size of this community, have to be Romeo and Juliet in a school play. And there was nothing beyond that. And then the story just kind of fell apart. But um, I couldn't stop thinking about that brother and sister. Um, I was interested in them as characters, that they would be willing to do it. And then the more I thought about it, and I was trying to come up with an idea for a novel, I thought, well, you know, what, what kind of parents would let their kids do that? And then I thought, oh, if they were artists, you know, if they thought of it as a subversive act. And so that was the initial, that was the kernel of the story for me, was, was, a, was a brother and sister being made to do transgressive things because their parents want them to. Um, and from that, I thought, well, they'll be performance artists. And, and I just kind of really built around that one scene until I had an idea of what the novel was going to be. So it started from, from really from failure until it, until it turned into something else. How long did it take for you from that initial story to the time it was published to kind of develop it all the way through? Yeah, it was probably a year and a half it took me to write it, um, which partly was I was on a deadline because I, I owed a book to the, to the publisher and so I wrote much more quickly than I would have, I think, if I had time to fret over it. So the book was more quickly written than I'm used to, um, partly just because I, I didn't want to give the advance money back to the publisher, and so I was like, i got to get this book finished. Um, but it was also, once I got those characters in my head, it was, it was not easy to write, but it was fun to write, so it, it took, it, I moved through it more quickly than I had suspected just because I never wanted to leave those characters, so I was always eager to return to the story. In terms of the casting of the film, were you surprised by the choices they made in terms of the characters, or did it seem kind of like spot on? Did you have any input in that? No, I mean, you know, it was, it's just one of those wonderful things where if Nicole Kidman says she wants to be in the movie, regardless of what you pictured, you're, you're totally jazzed about it, and Jason Bateman and Christopher Walken. I, I don't know if I ever had a definitive idea of, of who those characters should be played by, but each time they told me, you know, this person's going to play the mom, this person's going to play... Every time they said it, I was, I'd see them, and I said, oh, that, that makes perfect sense. I think that will be great. Um, but, you know, in my head, it was so personal, uh, and they didn't look like the characters on screen. Um, but in some ways, that's, that made me happy, because for me, the book is still the book, and those characters are in my head, uh, so that the movie feels like a, a different work of art, because it is slightly separate from what I envisioned as a book. Well, it was interesting because, to me, I felt like Christopher Walken was such a great choice for like, oh, yeah. the eccentric artist dad, because, you know, he's kind of out there. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, that was perfect. I mean, that, that one really felt spot on in a way, and, and I was really, really excited when they said that because I love his work so much. But, uh, yeah, that was, you just, again, you don't complain if, if, a, if some amazing actor wants to be in the movie, uh, you're just super jazzed. And you you wanted to move forward. As a writer, I like alliteration, yeah. and I, I thought Fang family, it has a very yeah. kind of specific ring to it, but mm -hmm. I'm just curious as to what made you think of that, because it's such an unusual Oh, yeah, name, so, you know? so the kind of backstory for it, for me, and I don't even remember if it's in the book or not, but that um, the, the, the patriarch of the family... Um, chose that name. It's, it's a name that he um, legally changed his name to, to, to Caleb Fang, um, partly because I think what he wanted was that the family is feral in some ways, that, that, that this is a family that has been raised in the wild. Um, so they call themselves the Fangs. And, and also there's the, the possible threat and violence of, of bared Fangs, I think, that, uh, that they want, you know, some, some way to disrupt. Um, so, no, it's not their birth name, uh, it's just a name they've given themselves. The a topic of, like, family relationships, something that's always intrigued you? 
Yeah, I mean that's all I really care about is is the the nature of of what a family is, and um, uh, I'm 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 a domestic writer. I mean my my sphere is domestic. That's what I'm interested in is is the home space, and um, what I'm mostly interested in is is the way in which we our own actions affect the people that we love, and so as a parent now I've been a child and now I'm a parent. I understand that thing that as an adult you love something so much mm -hmm. that you can't help but want to share it with your your offspring. You you want them to love it the way that you do, and there's the danger of of pushing them into something that that they themselves don't want, and and you believe that it's an altruistic thing. You're giving them something beautiful that means something to you, um, and yet I think this is what this is one of the pitfalls of parenting is that time and time again you try to make your child up. A, a, a reflection of you um, and so you know I, I resist that and also feel myself doing those things with my own kids so you know when I took the fangs it's 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 an absurd you know uh, kind of ridiculous conceit but it's pushing forward but it, it at the heart of it is this idea of how do you raise a child and and not in some ways try to make them into who you are Speaking of one thing becoming another, mm -hmm. <laughs> what are some of the what do you feel is one of the more challenging aspects of seeing a work go from the page to the screen? Well, I mean that's that's the thing I think a lot of people always say like the movie is never as good as the book when they when they when they see the movie version and and I think part of the problem is that you expect them to be the same. I know I do that when I'll see a, a, like a comic book that I love. And I see the movie isn't faithful in some ways to it. I believe that that's a problem. But but a movie is its own thing. It's its own story. Uh, it uses the same source material. So um, that was something I, I really was wanted to make sure it was clear to the people making this movie was that I I knew at the heart of it that it wouldn't be my book. It would be something different. Um, and I wanted that. I think that's what's amazing about adaptation. There's something really incredible about taking an existing work of art and transforming it into another form. I, I think that's magical. And so I never worry about if it's if it's the same as the book or the same as the existing piece. I just am so you know thrilled to see how it changes, um, which was what was fun about seeing this movie was, in a lot of ways, what I love about it is not how it's similar to the book, but how it deviates from it. Swanee is, is kind of known for its writers, for the yeah. writers' conference yeah. and things like that. What is some of your best advice for anybody who kind of uh, would like to make writing a profession? I, I mean, it, the, for me it's kind of um, two things. And one is, the, the first thing is to read as much as possible. You know, I think that people that want to write but who don't also read voraciously are doing themselves a disservice because you need to know what else has, you need to know what's come before you so that you can take those things and make them new. Uh, so if you're not reading, then you're not aware of, of the, all the kind of amazing ways that you can move forward. Um, and then the other thing is, I think a lot of people don't, they, writing is a, is, it's a, it's a lifetime pursuit. It's not something that kicks in when you're 20 years old and, and it's over when you're 50. If you do it right, it's something that you'll do till the day that you die. And so as much as writing should be a career and people need to make money, I think I try to think of it as a thing that I'm going to do for the rest of my life and, and hopefully I'll steadily get better at it. And so I didn't expect when I was 30 years old to all of a sudden know what I was doing and this was just going to be the way I would write forever. I, I thought of it as the writer that I am when I'm 50 is going to be a completely different writer than I was when I was 30 because it's a lifetime pursuit. So uh, I think people want so quick, so badly to just quickly accumulate publications and to get a book deal, and I, I don't think that matters nearly as much. I don't think it matters what you do on the front end. It's, it's how long you're at it.